Welcome back to the Find Me in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Connor Kaysen. I am uh, the host on all of the channels here at Find Me in Seattle. If you are new to the show, what Find Me in Seattle was started for was just a channel to promote create community, talk about local businesses, talk about local things here within our beautiful city of Seattle and all the nearby residents as well. And uh, yeah, it's evolved into YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I've got this podcast now and I appreciate you for listening anywhere that you're listening. But today is September 11th, 2020. And obviously it's an interesting day. It's a weird day. Uh, it's a day of remembrance about September 11th, 2001 in New York City. And the world just continues to to get weird and get crazy and change and surprise us. And uh, now we're 11 days into September and the new part of the apocalypse that it seems like we're going through is these wildfires that are ravaging the entire west coast but before we talk about the fires let's go uh back to 9 11 uh september 11th i love that it's got the hashtag never forget and we're gonna bring this up uh i hope that lives on forever i think as time goes on it's gonna be interesting how that day is remembered uh pearl harbor day in december so many of us weren't there for it so it just doesn't hit in the same way that september 11th does and i'm sure uh with this new generation that's coming up it it's it's going to change as well but i love the concept that every year we do never forget and uh that helps us not to forget that day was so crazy i remember i was in seventh grade i must have only been in like my first month of junior high i was at a new school and i used to take the public city bus to school where i grew up in california and i remember getting well waking up seeing the twin towers falling uh seeing the despair on my mom's face that day because it was something that she'd never seen before um and obviously only being a very young teenager didn't really know what was happening but when it really hit me was when i got on the bus that morning and the whole bus was empty usually it's like a standing room only uh crowded kind of bus and there were seat there were all the seats were open very few kids were going to school that day and that's when I was like, oh, this is something very different that's happening. And uh, yeah, it'll definitely be a day that I don't forget. And I'm sure every single one of you listening will not forget that day and the things that you did and the things that you saw. And uh, that day is it's interesting to look back upon here in 2020 going through our own pandemic and thinking about real heroes were made that day, right? Not they weren't made, but real heroes stepped up and uh, revealed themselves that day, and thousands of people lost their lives, um, committing real acts of heroism, right? Selflessness, going up into those towers, risking their life. I mean, so many thousands of people uh, rose up against fear of what could happen, and did some amazing things and sacrificed so much and so many people have sacrificed since then uh from you know so many uh cancer deaths related to 9 11 afterwards i mean the destruction that was around that and the impact it had on everyone that was around that area every new yorker the impact that it has on those people who live there at that time is just unbelievable something that is incredible and and it makes me think relating it here to 2020 we're going through this coronavirus right and now coronavirus right if we're at 200,000 people uh right that's 10 times as many people have passed away in the last six months from coronavirus and we memorialized the one day i think because it was so tangible right and was such a big impact we hadn't seen something an attack at that scale really since pearl harbor and um it's impacted so many of us and i wonder if coronavirus and 2020 and this pandemic is going to get the same treatment in the long run are there going to be statues that stand for all of the doctors and nervous and frontline workers who have sacrificed themselves and been real heroes in this time uh to fight against coronavirus i really wonder we have so much talk going on 
this year especially about statues and memorializing people and who uh, needs to be memorialized or who should, whose statues should come down, who doesn't stand for uh, what we believe in today that was memorialized yesterday. And uh, I really hope that we there is some type of big memorial or something that we do. We have a Remembrance Day. Um, it, it sucks that I'm even saying that because we're not over this yet. We're not even close to being over it. Um, but just reflecting on 9-11 and the sadness of that day um, and the impact that it had on the next 20 years of our future is very big. Um, and comparing what would what would happen if that happened now is, is terrifying to think about. And I hate bringing up that concept. Um, but it's very interesting how the country at that time seemed from my very um, elementary young teenager perspective that that really brought a sense of community it brought a lot more people together and i would have predicted that a pandemic that we're going through would actually create the same sense of camaraderie and struggle that we're all going through and at right now it doesn't really feel that way right it feels like and, and it's very political there's there's so much like back and forth going against each other that it's very shocking that we have this big historical moment happening something that's just ravaging all of america and all of the world and we're not coming together to fight against it it's very weird to contrast and think back today and the impacts that 9 11 had on our country and the things we did and we definitely did some terrible things uh going to war and attacking the middle east um right so so it's not without our own uh scars from the decisions that we made after that but it's just a very different situation and and maybe we can chalk that up to my youthfulness and ignorance about what was actually happening in the country but uh it's very interesting that this pandemic has been um hugely impactful and it doesn't seem to have the same sense of like bringing us all together it's ap actually separating us um and yeah that's weird but it's it's 9 11 and uh, I consider myself lucky to be able to be inside my house and and just to jump on the microphone and the camera here and and talk about it and and reflect on those days. It's it's crazy crazy times that we're living through, folks. This is uh, absolutely wild. I woke up this morning and was kind of not feeling. I was like, oh, it's Friday. All right, I got to do the show. I got to do the podcast. Uh, what are all the things I'm going to talk about? And I was feeling a little uneasy. And then I looked out my window and I saw that's covered in smoke. We can't open our windows today. And it's 9-11. And there's this pandemic. I got the mass on my wall. I got smoke outside. Uh, I'm creating this content for clients about 9-11. And it's all happening with everything else that's going on in the world, everything else we've talked about every episode of the show, um, it's crazy that the fires moved in in this last week or two, and we have a new thing that's happening that's causing billions of dollars in destruction, putting people on the street, losing their homes, losing everything, uh, and then millions of people are being affected by this air quality, right? And, and this just stacks on top of a lot of the people that are at risk for coronavirus, this uh, environment of smoke is not helping them either and it's just so sad and so unfortunate and um it's crazy that one of the fires at least one of the fires was started by a gender reveal party that's just so sad and uh, gender reveal parties are like 10 years old and i'm curious of if it's going to continue this year i'm sure it is i don't think enough people are really all that on top of that happening but you know don't let, yeah let's just not be lighting fires it's, it's this is a thing that's happening every year now and uh it's it's devastating right it's i i don't think it's supposed to be happening at this rate fires are very natural they always happen out in the wild but the the rate that they're happening out is very scary um and I, I remember here in Seattle a couple of years ago, we had a big, it was like all of August was just smoky the whole time. And we like kind of missed uh, a month of summer that year and we had fire season and everyone's like, oh, this is going to be what it's like every fire season or every summer. Uh, but last year we didn't really have it. And then this year it is back uh, now, I guess in September versus August, but uh, fires aren't all that new for me growing up in California. We didn't have snow days. We had fire air quality days i remember missing school uh specifically missing high school because the air quality was so bad and uh a, a lot of people who grew up in colder climates they went to high school specifically was a lot indoors right they had the traditional what you see in movies they had hallways and lockers and covered 
covered rooms. Where I went to high school in Southern California, there were no hallways, right? It was all outdoors. And then you, once you walked into a classroom, which was probably in a portable building, uh, there really wasn't this sense of hallways and classrooms. And so everything was outdoors. So you had to cancel classes you couldn't have kids hanging outside when the air quality was this dangerous and uh, i remember once going to the golf course because i was I, I played golf on the high school golf team and i'm pretty sure practice was canceled and i still went and i remember leaving early and just being like why did i come here um but it was just so much like in the routine and i was a teenager so i didn't know any better and i was like yeah i'm just gonna go to the golf course and uh I remember getting there and nobody was there and I'm just like, this is a bad idea. I shouldn't be outside. Um, but yeah, this is the, the, we're feeling the effects of climate change and, and the effects that it's going to have, this is not going to go away. This is going to be a yearly annual thing that we always experience. So we've got to figure out better ways how to address it, uh, and help people and help our environment because it's scary when you see all these photos of uh like an organ where it looks like the brand new blade runner movie it that's a really scary scene right when the whole sky is orange and cloudy it looks like an apocalypse movie and uh maybe that image is actually very fitting for the year because it just feels like it feels like the apocalypse right now right it just keeps stacking on of all of the the terrible news. It's crazy. Every week I feel like I do the show and it's like, wow, what more terrible things happened this week? Um, hopefully we'll get more to a positive. Like the whole point of the show is to do more positive. So, uh, let's go talk about, uh, some other things that were happening. I know you guys are all feeling, uh, I'm probably making this worse over the last 11 minutes. Uh, so, before I jump into my featured businesses and the feature meal, I had another uh, funny lesson that I wanted to share here on the, the show. So I think it was last week I talked about my obsession with Love Island and uh, the show, still obsessed with it. That hasn't changed at all. But I have this group text thread uh, with a few of my friends who also watch it every night and and Amanda's obviously in that text thread and we're always just talking about all the people and everything. And so I had this text thread and at the same time I get this text thread uh, or this text from a client of mine and he is asking me about editing videos on iMovie and something that he can't figure out. And then I send this text. I got to open it up just so I can read it. Exactly. I meant to send the text to Love Island group, but I ended up sending it to my client instead. And so it's like, oh, I finally figured it out. Uh, oddly that this feature isn't documented on YouTube, yada, yada, yada. He's asking me and I'm like, I'm sorry, I wasn't more helpful, but I'm glad you figured it out. And it's all good. And then I text him. I said, Johnny and Sally want that money. And I put the three claps between want, like it was like that, want that money. And <laughs> I sent it to the client and immediately when I push send, I was like, oh no, that is the weirdest thing to say to one of my clients. And it just immediately I'd own up to it. I was like, ha I'm so sorry. This is the wrong person. This was meant to be to my friends who are watching the show Love Island right now. And he was like, this is hilarious. That's my new catchphrase. Johnny and Sully want that money. And it, it just was a funny lesson and reminder for myself this week that you got to own up to your mistakes, right? And you've when you catch them, you don't want to dwell on those things, right? Just immediately when I, I texted it to him, it, was, it obviously didn't send anything bad. So I'm glad that I'm learning the lesson because uh, I could have sent something way worse in a text message. But it was just like, I am so sorry. I did not mean to send that to you. This was a silly text message that I was sending to my friends on Love Island. And uh, it was just a good reminder to own up to your mistakes, catch yourself. And uh, if it's something lighthearted like this, there's nothing lost. Uh, but even if we're all probably guilty of sending a text message or accidentally texting someone or accidentally messaging uh, the person you were talking about secretly to your friends and just owning up to it. And uh, we're all human and we're all guilty of um, getting caught up in these things. And it was just a silly lesson that I thought I'd share with you guys here on the show. All right. So we stop talking about all the ridiculous stuff and get into maybe the part that you guys are really wanting to hear on the show. All right, so let's talk about the featured business of the week. My featured business of the week is the Northwest Cider Association uh, and the NWCA, they were formed in 2010. And what they do is they bring cideries and cider lovers together to share knowledge, experience, and live in the Northwest cider culture. 
and they're a trade organization formed by all the cider producers here in the Pacific Northwest, and they want to promote awareness and of regional ciders, right? As cider has become a very popular drink here in the United States. And yesterday, the uh, September 10th was the start of what is known as Seattle Cider Week. Cider Week is no longer a week. It's actually 10 days long. Uh, so it'll go through next weekend. And they have, usually they have events happening all over Washington uh, that are in-person events. But given that it's 2020, all these events are happening online. And so they've got tons of events pop-ups, uh, virtual tastings, and then all of the cideries have their own promotion. So if if you have a preferred cidery, if you have a place that you like or a place that you're willing to try, a lot of them have specials and deals and promotions going on right now. And it's a great time. This whole show is about supporting local businesses. 2020 is more important than ever to be supporting local businesses. So this is just a cool week to uh, support some of those small batch uh, breweries and cideries that are creating delicious drinks. And I highly recommend uh, you go pick those up. I went to Tiku Tavern in downtown Seattle. And uh, thanks to the, my friends there at Northwest Cider Association, they hooked me up with a few different ciders. So make, make sure to watch me, uh, watch my Instagram where I'm posting those i got three different bottles so i drank one from a uh, tuton i believe and then i've got two more in the fridge uh that i'm gonna be showing off there on instagram but shout out to northwest cider association and seattle cider week i just think it's a cool way to bring together all these unique local businesses that i'm sure are struggling right now and this is the 10th annual washington cider week and yeah thank you very much for being for working with me on the promotion of cider week Northwest Cider Association. You can catch them on Instagram, or if you want to know more about all the events, uh, give them a Google. Check out their website. They got a whole calendar of all the places that are activating uh, over the next ten days. All right. Next part of the show is my featured meal of the week, and the meal of the week is not in Seattle today. This past weekend, I drove all the way up to Edmonds with Amanda. We just wanted to do something a little different. It was a holiday weekend. We weren't going on vacation. We weren't doing anything, but it was like, all right, let's go somewhere and get some food and just like walk around. Uh, so we drove up to Edmonds uh, because we know that they have that Edmonds boardwalk and they have that waterfront there. And so we went and we just hung out there. It wasn't super crowded, which was really nice. Uh, finding parking wasn't extremely difficult. We did one loop and found a spot and just sat on a picnic table right there on the waterfront on the sound. It was absolutely beautiful. And we got food from probably my new favorite poke spot called Ono Poke. And Ono Poke is uh, an authentic Hawaiian poke experience, which for I've eaten poke all over the city, and now I'm really starting to see, oh, there really is a difference between the Hawaiian places and the more like American, let's call them the mainland uh, poke. And here are the, the things that really make it different. So Ono, ono Poke, all of their fish is premium sushi grade one. So it's not frozen. And that's the big thing to know. So many of the poke places here in Seattle, they're serving you fish that has been probably flash frozen, sent over here from wherever they, whatever distributor they got it from. Uh, and, but the true authentic Hawaiian poke restaurants will have it all fresh. It's usually overnighted uh, to get to them. And I learned just looking on their website, uh, which I'm pretty sure, I don't know his name. I'm so sorry that I'm not giving a shout out specifically to the owners, but they just seem like so friendly. When I walked in there, it was so inviting. Uh, everyone from the person taking my order to uh, preparing the meal was asking questions and just uh, being friendly. And you don't see that a lot in these type of restaurants. And so that was really nice. Uh, and th their website, they've got some really good things. So uh, poke, which is really important. It's not pokey. Poke is uh, in Hawaiian means to cut into cubes. And um, what else did they say here? Their ahi is fresh from Hawaii. Their salmon is from BC, Canada. Their hamachi and taco are from Japan, and they're all premium sushi grade one. Uh, so it's all locally sourced, fresh seafood, and you can taste the difference. And a lot of times what you see in other poke restaurants is it's always loaded up with sides. And, and it's got me thinking, maybe it's loaded up with sides really to take away, to... to um, 
camouflage the frozen fish a little bit because Hawaiian authentic poke is always about the marinated fish. Uh, at other poke spots, especially like the Chipotle style assembly line, what they're gonna do is they're gonna put the raw fish in a bowl and then put sauce in it and like mix it together. If you go to a Hawaiian spot, it's all pre-marinated and pre-sauced, um, right? So they kind of, they're gonna have a, a big batch of whether it's spicy or, um, you know, cover, covered in whatever. They've always got different flavors. I really love how Ono, every day they have different flavors. So if you're going to check them out, make sure you jump on their Facebook page first and go see what flavors they're going to have. We ended up going there like in the mid afternoon. It must've been like around three o'clock and they were getting close to sold out, um, obviously holiday weekend, but I would say go in that earlier lunchtime if you can. Uh, but it was delicious. Ono Poke is definitely become one of my favorite Poke restaurants. Uh, I would say probably top two but I, I don't think i've ever gone to a poke place here in seattle and really been like i want to go back there like tomorrow and if ono wasn't in Edmonds and i didn't have to drive the 20 miles to get there i would have been back there tomorrow uh but i kind of feel bad because next time i go to Edmonds, i got all these responses and suggestions of like here's some other places that you should go try in Edmonds, and i was like man i, I want to go back to ono because it was that damn good and the sides i i, I got off of the tangent on the sides a lot of times it poke restaurants around the city you'll see a lot of different sides and it's part of that assembly line there's only you only get one side in your poke meal here at ono and so i got the edamame which was a lot of edamame uh, amanda got the mac salad and then you can get it with uh rice or salad i like to go half and half rice and salad and absolutely phenomenal well-priced delicious and uh yeah, Ono Poco. Ono Poke. Thank you for becoming one of my favorite poke restaurants in in the entire world. I don't really have a lot of experience with poke in the world, but definitely here in Washington, you are at the top of my list. So thank you very much. Um, all right. That concludes the meal of the week, the feature business of the week. Uh, thank you very much, Ono Poke and Northwest Cider Association. The one other thing that I did, did this week is I've been on the quest to find good places to meet within a social distance uh environment right so i have clients all over the city and sometimes i have to meet with them right and most of the time i don't but there's occasionally uh things we either videos we have to shoot or things we have to work on papers we need to sign whatever it is and so I had this one client and I had to have an in-person meeting with them to talk about uh, some different camera dynamics and social media and all that kind of stuff. And they wanted to meet in person. And so I was like, all right, we'll wear a mask and we'll stand away from each other. And I've had a few meetings like in parks, right? Very unofficial, like bring a towel, bring a blanket. We'll sit on the grass away from each other. Uh, but this time I went to Fremont Brewery and I got there in the middle afternoon on a weekday. So this was on Tuesday and we met at one o'clock and there was, there was like four other people there. Uh, I think Fremont Brewing opens at noon and then they probably close around like eight or nine. And uh, we were there for a couple hours. We had masks on the whole time unless we were sipping the drinks and it was very nice to meet there. So they, Fremont Brewing now has like a host station out front. So they manage where everyone's sitting, which was really nice. Uh, make sure everyone's spread out. But by the time I left at four, you could tell that it was getting more crowded and uh, getting a lot busier. But if you're looking for a place to meet, that is kind of the first place that I found out that uh, I thought is a big open space, has something to drink on, you can support a local business and you can meet at a appropriate social distance or, or at least wear masks and be outside. And so, yeah, that was actually surprising. I also got a message. I heard that Mr. West in the U Village is really nice. Our U Village has like a whole uh, space dedicated to meeting outside for social distance. So I'm gonna check that out here uh, soon and I will report back on if that is also a nice place to meet. But as we keep going through this pandemic, we know that meeting is meeting in person is still very important. It's always going to be important. We're social creatures and all of us are going to have to find times of like, when we meet, how far away do we stand when we wear masks and, and have those interactions. And so I'm really on a quest to find all of the good places to recommend to you guys that if you need them, you have access to those spots. And so if you have any spots you want to recommend to me, please let me know and I'll share them here on the show. 
And that's it. That concludes my September 11, 2020 episode of the Find Me in Seattle podcast. As always, thank you so much for listening, for joining me here. Uh, please subscribe if you're listening on iTunes. Honestly, like scroll down. I'd love for you to give me five stars if you want to type in a review there that's even better uh i'd love to get more of those and i appreciate anyone who's ever shared any of this tell a friend if you think it's interesting hit me up on instagram facebook and youtube i appreciate you all there thank you every week for joining me here on the podcast i hope you guys stay safe please keep those windows closed uh try to stay cool as well as possible right now i know with the bad air and the heat i am broiling here in my apartment right now so i understand how i'm sure a lot of you are feeling if you got ac here in seattle you are damn lucky and i am jealous right now but uh stay safe wear your mask wash your hands even more than you are now and uh be nice to people treat them fairly support your local businesses spend money tip them well and um i'm gonna try to keep staying positive here Enjoy the weekend, and I'll see you next Friday.